game. So, Rashad, you were out there. This was your group. You, do you think that any of this anger and frustration, um, do you think that is spreading? Is it going too far? Don, I think that for, for many, many years, uh, black people have been under attack. I, I, I find it very offensive that people are going to say this chant has led to the deaths of officers. Uh, there's been plenty of rhetoric. But are you condoning that? City you don't condone that language, do you? I mean, here's the thing. It might not have been the best chant, but I, I'm not going to tell someone what they can say or what they can't say. What is the end game of Black Lives Matter? if you don't want to involve in the political process when so many things have come together to help your particular cause? I see, the, the, the end game is for us to stop being killed, for us to stop being beat by but how the how does that happen then? There's with, all this talk. How does, I, the, the question, I, and I, I want to be very respectful of you, but how does that happen without legislation, without being involved in the political or the legislative process? It doesn't just happen from yelling. Here, here's the thing, Don. This racism that we see, this white supremacy that we see, it didn't just start yesterday. So these politicians, these police chiefs and things mm -hmm. of that, people of that nature are acting like this problem just started yesterday. They are in total control to change policies, to do things to really help the community. What we see is continued everyday efforts to try to bring down the movement. We're going to continue to use our voices. Rashad, people I understand that, but respectfully, history, how... Don, how what do you want? How do you plan to achieve that? You know, what do you, what do you people want? What is it exactly do you want from white people? What we want is people to listen. We're going to continue to use our voices. You cannot tell me, Don, that there's no power in protesting. If there is a power in protesting, protest, but that you have to go beyond protest. And listen, I, I, think black, I think what Black Lives Matter is doing, I think it's very important. But you have to have an end game. What is the end game? You say the end game is to stop racism. Okay, then how are you going to do it? Don, there, there's been a 33-point plan, 33-point plan, 33-point plan. If you go to campaignzero.org, there's a 33-point plan on there that lists out policies that need to be changed. We want complete criminal justice reform. We also want people to stop acting like they don't know what the problem is, right, or they don't know what the solution is. The solution okay. is doing things to help people not pushing the blame off, not talking about we won't sit down at the table. Do you think Dr. King sat down at the table? Of course he did, and nothing has changed since then. Yeah, okay. Well, we, we'll leave it there. I think a lot has changed since Dr. King. And I don't know if you know about this, but Milo Yiannopoulos, you know yeah, who he is? Yeah, yeah. He, got, he, got he got banned from Twitter for writing a bad review about Ghostbusters, which essentially confirms what he said about the regressive left, is that they're trying to stifle ideas. Like, and then they're saying that he's responsible for the harassment of Leslie Jones, right? right? Which is horrible. You know, what people did. She's a fucking comedian, She's man. also great. She's great. Her. She's funny as yeah. shit, man. Um, but also... These are just trolls. All right, you're always going to have trolls, but he didn't do that. He didn't. I mean, he's not responsible for. He didn't like sick he didn't, them. He wasn't the catalyst no. to the. Yeah. But what he did was make an incredible amount of sense when he was describing that you cannot make fun of this movie. You cannot criticize this movie if you do you're labeled a misogynist and he talked about how preposterous this movie is that these women are all out kicking ass and every man in the movie is a buffoon and the women don't have any negative traits or qualities at all. They're, they're, they're super powerful and super awesome and hilarious. And the, the humor is non-existent because they put them in this restrictive box. He got you, banned from Twitter for that? Got banned for Twitter for this. You, you, well, they, they're blaming him on the harassment that he Leslie the, experienced. He incited the... Well, they didn't incite, any, incite anything. He, he made a provocative article about a piece of art. I mean, Twitter established some weird fucking thing <clears> called <throat> the Trust and Security Council or something like that. And they brought wow. on all these social trust justice wars jamie looked that up what the fuck Good is that God. called that they tried to do but they brought on all these people for this sounds like mouth china it is, but it's, jesus it's christ it's very very it's bizarre. thought control it it's is thought, thought control. control well look i'm against harassment if you can stop people from being shitty to people and you say well here's someone who's using twitter and they're going after people in a very shitty way but the problem with that is look at how many fucking people have made shitty, horrible, evil comments about police officers, all police officers, trust and safety council. When it comes to safety, everyone plays a role. Please make that larger so I can read it. Well, Twitter, Twitter, empowers, empowers, Twitter empowers every voice 
to shape the world. But you can't do that unless you feel safe and confident enough to express yourself freely and connect with the world around you. To help give your voice more power, Twitter does not tolerate behavior intended to harass, intimidate, or use fear to silence another user's voice. Very general, by the way. Listen Very how general, general that is. So now you have a council that is deciding whether or not you're good enough for Twitter. That's well, you know amazing. what the first thing they did with him, they couldn't figure out what to do with him. They, they took away his verification. When they did that, he gained 20,000 new followers immediately. Wow. Because there was a, ma a massive backlash. Yeah. So now they're in a place where there's even more backlash. Because if you look at the actual words that he typed versus what they're accusing him of, and it just doesn't stack up. It's clear that they don't like him because he's a Republican, he's a Trump supporter. Sure. He And he is a fucking troll. I love him. I think he's hilarious. He's a troll. But in the marketplace of ideas, you should be able to combat his trolling behavior. The without things that a he gag. Said. Without gagging yes. him. Well, without you, you gagging him. And engage him. him. Engage him. In a debate, yes. in a vigorous, spirited exactly. debate, yeah, Mark, don't gag yeah. the guy. Right. If you really feel like he has done something egregious, he's done something that can be criticized, criticize it. That's right. There is something called common decency, and you know people like to jump to these extremes, but it's not. it doesn't inform the debate. I think what you're saying is so important, and then the idea that you've got to create safe haven for those that you agree with and disagree right. with. And I that's... disagree with Milo all the time. Yeah. I mean, he and I are friends, and I've had him on the podcast twice. And when we talk, I, I mock him. I mean, we have fun. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, but he's a good guy, but he's just really right wing. I also think his trolling is so fucking sophisticated. For example, The Economist last week drew the wrath of the liberal website Media Matters, who said that their jalapeno flag cover was the sort of stereotype that ignores Latinos as a multifaceted community and relegates them to chili pepper consuming constituents. <laughs> hey, Media Matters, can I say one thing to you? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, one more. At Mount Holyoke this year, they canceled a production of the vagina monologues because they said it offended the transgendered by offering, quote, an extremely narrow perspective on what it oh means God. to be a woman. <laughs> yes, we forgot all about the 0.3% of women who don't have vaginas but still want a monologue. Uh, I'm... S <laughs> I'm sorry, I love the transgendered, but if you're transgendered and you can't handle the vagina monologues, you don't need a vagina. You're already a giant pussy. <laughs> That's my agenda. Let's turn to Jason Collins. Um, it, this is the uh, sports star that came out. Uh, you tweeted this. So Jason Collins is a hero because he's gay. Our standard for heroism has dropped quite a bit since Normandy. Why such a cheap shot against a guy who did a pretty brave thing? I don't think it's a cheap shot. I think that heroism is defined by willingness to sacrifice uh, in favor of, and take a real personal risk in favor of a, of a noble larger goal. This may be a noble larger goal, but I'm he's not the first, sure what the risk is. first male American athlete in history to come out as gay while still playing. Martina Navratilova came out in 1981. That was male. three years before I was I said, born. I said male. So let me ask you something, Pierce. Why do you hate Americans so much that you think this is such a homophobic country that when Jason Collins comes out, it is the biggest deal in the history of humanity. Mm. President Obama has to personally call him to congratulate Why him. do I hate America so much? That you think that we are such a homophobic country. I think you may be homophobic simply because you said, really? why is Jason Collins a hero? Because he's gay. I don't understand why. Why I... sneer at a guy for coming out when I'm he's not being courageous? I'm not sneering at him for Aren't coming out. Aren't you the one I'm... being homophobic? I don't think it's homophobic to simply no? say we're apathetic about people's personal lives. You're, you're the one who thinks your, your government's going to invade and attack you, which is fairly anti-American sentiment. I don't think that my You're government is going to do that. Guy I think there's a possibility. Brave because he came out. So when you call I think that America is a fundamentally homophobic. good place, you know, you Pierce. Look at your own I, I think that America is a fundamentally good place. The fact is this, Pierce. You're British, and a lot of folks have said you should leave the country because you're British. You come on here every night, and you speak in a British accent. That doesn't make you a hero. That makes you being who you are. Damn! I understand. I'm Jewish. I wear a yarmulke on TV, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of anti-Semitism. There are people who are killed in anti-Semitic attacks and, you know, per capita, as many hate crimes against Jews as against gays in this country. America is not an anti-Semitic country, and I'm not a hero for wearing a yarmulke. Being who you are in 2013 in America is what America is about. It is not heroic to be who you are publicly. I'm glad for Jason Collins if he feels that he's going to live a happier life now. But it does not make you a hero to be who you are. Because oh, America is not it. a homophobic country. You know country. what, Ben? Come off it. Come off it. Got to leave it there, but come off it. Oh, is that Give an the argument? guy a break. So let's do another one. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
whoa, 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 whoa. No, wait, wait. I don't want to deal with the ball. Come on. No. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. Understand, this is what's the matter. I don't know how you would characterize the gang leaders who got 13 year old kids hopped up on crack and sent them out onto the street to murder other African American children. Maybe you thought they were good citizens. She didn't. She didn't. You are defending the people who kill the lives you say matter. Tell the truth. You are defending the people who caused young people to go out and take guns. There was a 13-year-old girl in Washington, D.C. who was planning her own photo. How would you do it? Now, look at this other one. We're winning all over the country. We're winning in Ohio against Kasich, who's totally overrated, by the way. We're winning all over. Do I hear somebody over there? You know, you have one guy over there shouting. We have thousands of people, and you'll read about him tomorrow. They'll say, oh, the, the, the room had a, a picket. All right, yeah, get him the hell out of here, will you please? Get him out of here. Throw him out. No, we had it the other day. I got criticized. We had it the other night. I had a lot of people, and one guy who was seriously obese. He complained when I mentioned that food stamps, we have a lot of people on food stamps. And the guy went crazy. And they said that wasn't politically correct. Who cares? We all have a weight problem. Yeah, you can get him out. Yeah, get him out. Get him the hell out of here. Get him out of here. Get out. Get him out of here. Did you see Bernie Sanders? See, he was politically correct. Two young women came up to the podium. They took over his microphone. I promise you that's not going to happen with me. I promise. Never going to happen. Not going to happen. Can't let that stuff happen. Which would be worse? To live as a monster or to die as a good man? sure that this is a safe environment for all students. Um, one thing that comes, off, um, comes up really often is this idea of content warnings. And the reason that I like bringing up uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act is that to me, content warnings are all about access. So I think of them as sort of collective warnings. reasonable um, accommodation. You know, if you think about the way uh, society is organized, organized don't that the Americans in the United States are It is to make sure that do the same and 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 sexual violence to come forward and ask for a content warning when we know that one in four women um, in college will go through this. Are you sure about that? And I think that that's a, a problem. Okay. Um, anybody want to comment on this? Yes, I'd John. I'd be happy to. Um, so I, I think it's, it's helpful to take the accommodations perspective and we certainly all want people to feel that the classroom is open to them. We don't want people coming to the classroom and being afraid. Um, but first, I would question, is there, any, is there any evidence or reason to think that giving content warnings or trigger warnings actually will, will do this? Um, as a psychologist, I, I've been looking into this. Um, and the more you label things as potentially threatening, the more they develop a certain power to actually threaten. <clears throat> now, if there was evidence that these warnings actually helped people get over PTSD, then we'd have to balance various things. But there isn't, and the, the, the uh, therapist that I talked to, the people who study PTSD, were unanimous in saying that if someone has PTSD, the last thing you want to do is shield them from small reminders. In fact, the only way to get over the Pavlovianly conditioned fear is to let them exp be exposed to small things, and then nothing bad happens to them, and that's how the fear subsides. So I to I'm totally fine with being really explicit on the syllabus. We're going to cover these things. 
of course, let people know before they join. But if in the course of daily teaching, you say, we're about to look at something that shows this, that, or the other thing, content warning, you're actually hurting the very people you want to help.